So almost a year ago, I uploaded a video where I reacted and roasted my first ever piano piece that I wrote. And this is one thing that is not very idiomatic, especially in the left hand. This is extremely uncomfortable. But that was only part of the picture. You see, I was reacting to the first draft of the piece that I wrote back in 2017, but I totally forgot that I actually published a finished version of this piece in 2018, and I actually went on my way to officially copyright the piece with the Library of Congress. Yeah, I must have really liked this piece. Despite Despite how cringy it sounds to me now, I want to take a closer look at the Shi music I published, and try to criticize and fix it almost four years later. So here's the sheet music. It doesn't look too bad upon first impression, but as a self-proclaimed professional composer and engraver, I cannot tolerate such novice craftsmanship. And to be clear, I'm not gonna actually criticize the music itself. Um, but more of just the look and layout and the appearance of that music um, because that's what the other video was for where I, I roasted it. Uh, this one is just to actually judge the appearance of it um, as a through the lens of an engraver. So keep that in mind as we continue. Like I mentioned, I'm a self-proclaimed music engraver, which is someone who edits the look and layout of the actual music so that it's easy to read and it's ready for publication. So I'm going to do my best to not alter the actual music itself, but simply the appearance, which can make or break a piece if you want it to get performed or published. And before we get started, get to learn your music notation software very well so you aren't limited by your lack of knowledge in that software. There are numerous online tutorials on all the major software, uh, but for this video I highly recommend using Dorical Pro for any composers looking to upgrade to a new one. Starting with some obvious fixes, make sure your tempo markings are aligned with the start of any new key signature, or if there's no key signature, align it with the first mark of notation. Next, we need to talk about voices in notation. What I mean is when there's two or more independent musical lines on one staff. So here, my voices are reversed. The whole note should be treated as a downstem, and the upper voices should be upstemmed. And just a quick side note, uh, it might seem that these changes are really insignificant and not that important um, because it doesn't really affect the readability of the music that much. Um, but these little details, uh, it's kind of like the devil's in the details. It's kind of what separates amateur from professional, uh, at least that's how I view it. Um, so never kind of gloss over these things as uh, not important. Uh, the little details really matter um, in just making a beautifully engraved score. So. I hope you keep that in mind as we continue. Back to the score, we need to fix small alignment elements, from expression marks to octave signs. And if you're wondering about how I know all these rules about engraving, it's a mixture of score studying other published scores, as well as looking at Elaine Gould's Behind Bars, which I have a video about, as well as a link below so you can get your own copy of the book. Next, I'm going to check my page margins and make sure there is no text or musical elements that collides with it and may be truncated off in printing. I also want to ensure that there's a consistent amount of measures per system and that the staff size is not too big or not too small. Lastly, I'm going to throw a nice music font over the entire project, which is called MTF Cadence. It's an affordable font that mimics the old hand engraved score style, and it just gives it a nice classic look. The link is down below to purchase it yourself. So we're finally done engraving and editing the entire score, and surprisingly there wasn't as many uh, glaring issues as I thought, but we still fixed a lot of major things that could have raised some eyebrows, so I'm glad we did that. And again, it's really important to have good engraving skills. It's kind of a dying art, um, but it's also uh, really in demand for emerging composers. Um, because not a lot of people uh, in their early stages of being a composer focus on good engraving. They kind of just focus on the music, which is, you know, makes sense. But um, in conjunction with having uh, really nice looking scores, you can kind of set yourself apart from other composers kind of in the same arena as you. Um, so that's kind of uh, what I focused on uh, in, in conjunction with writing decent music was having a, a good notation skills and engraving, and engraving skills. Um, so that's very important. And after this video, check out my review on Elan Gould's Behind Bars. It's really a fantastic resource that I use almost every single day as an engraver and composer. And uh, it covers literally any notation topic you can think of and more. Um, so yeah, very useful um, if you don't have that already. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and keep writing.